Hi guys, welcome back to Heather Green TMD in O-Gage. Having completed the yard light little project and things are progressing nicely, um, it's time to take a few steps back. Now my class 60 here, that you can see behind there, I haven't yet finished it. It's been a project that's been ongoing for a long, 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 too, well, too long a time. Um, so what we're going to do today is get the chassis ready for weathering. Um, the main issue was the lack of visible detail on the bogey now. Class 60s, the air pipework to the brake cylinders etc are quite clearly visible on the uh, bogey frame. So you can't really see it on these. There is a very small detail moulded into the frame but it's not picked out. So today's little project is to try and get the bogey pipework highlighted so that we can see it. So we're going to drop onto the workbench and we're going to see what we can find and sort out. See you in a sec. Right, here we are on the workbench but as you can see you really can't see the pipework at all anywhere on the bogey frames. So it's going to be fiddly. I can't just attack it with the paintbrush but I've come up with the idea of using a pencil rubber. Now what I'm going to do is just trim down the head and see if I can make it so that I can sort of print with a pad of paint and then have a go at that. Um, I can't see any other way. If it doesn't work, that doesn't matter. We just paint over it again black and it's no worse than what we're here now. And it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to weather the bogies anyway. So. I'll start by removing the bogey frames and uh, make a bit of room on the bench here and we'll go from there. It's quite simple really because these bogey frames just have two holes here which push onto the two lugs on the bogey and the glue if any is used is not very good at all and uh, they come off with very little effort. Half the time they're hanging off the side of the logo anyway. So. When they go back on, they will get fitted on a little bit better than they were. So we'll move the chassis out of the way so that we can see what we're doing. So here's the bogey frame and you could, really can't see the air pipes, but if you tip it up slightly so it catches the light, you can just see the mouldings there and there's a pipe that runs down each end. Now if I get a bit of extra white paint where it doesn't matter. It's easier to touch that in with a bit of black, I think, than to try and do each individual pipe without it. So, first things first. Just put these out of the way. And just so we can deal with one each, I'm gonna see if I can pop the steps off. Let's see the quality of Helgen glue is not very good and that makes life easier because we can get to the pipe that's behind the steps move those out of the way we have one here now what I'm going to do is shave the shape of the rubber and here I want it narrow so I can get into the corners of the frame. So hopefully the idea is to get a bit of paint on the end and just stamp on like a blotter. I think uh, if I can go a little bit narrow I might be able to get it So literally just dip it in paint and follow the pipes. So I'll just get some paint mixed up and uh, we'll have a go. Okay, so I've mixed up the Umbro 34, I think it is, matte white paint. Now I can't just dip the 
because it will just be way too much paint. So what I'm going to try first off, this is an experiment, is to literally paint a thin smear on the end of the rubber there. And then Sort of works, I don't know. Um, this is the first, I can always take the paint off and have another go. Oh, that's better. Yeah, so I can see what I'm doing. Now, like I say, the fact that there's too much white underneath the pipe doesn't really matter because I can easily touch that in with a bit of black afterwards. So I just carry on, follow the pipes. Oh, so it would have been easier if they'd done this in the factory. See that there? That's followed the pipes easier. And that's all I'm going to do. It's not going to be perfect. But hopefully, once we've touched in with a bit of black, once the white has dried, it'll come in. A tiny smear on there. See where we followed there. I don't know if this is working or not, but it will definitely be more visible than it was. Just a tiny smear of paint. The pipe behind the step. And hopefully once I've, like I say, once I've gone round, pick them up with the white, uh, black paint, it'll tidy up. So we'll have another go with this one here, see if we can make an improvement on the first one. Like I say, the weathering will hide some of it. Wipe off the edge so I'll try not to smear too much of it everywhere. Okay, here we go. So I don't know if it's worth putting a Move the paint on there, see if we can do it this way. Get it on there. Is that quicker? Okay. 
There's definitely less spread. Definitely works better. So I'm thinking perhaps I do need glasses for this now. Yep, I don't think it's going quite to plan now. But we'll see how it goes when we've added some black. So we'll be back in the right. Well, <coughs> where do, what do we say? I'm going to say that was sort of a bit of a failure. However, I've now got my black 34 mixed up. So what we shall do now is just go in. And we shall touch in where we've got some black where I don't want it. I know it looks a little bit rough, but it's not that bad. So what I'll do then, I'll just carry on and do the other three, and uh, we'll get a comparison once it's done. Okay, so we've now got the pipes picked out. They're not perfect, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is go outside with the airbrush, I'm going to quickly give these a blow over and the chassis a blow over and then I'll come back and show you how they've come up. Okay, so I've just literally a light dusting over with the airbrush, not too mad. Uh, rail match, uh, sleeper grime is what I've used, or no, frame dirt in this case. Um, so as you can see, you can still see the pipes and um, they look quite good actually, I'm quite happy with how they come out considering you wouldn't have even been able to see them. The frames are slightly different colours, different shades, it doesn't matter, it's a bit of a blend. But what I want to do now, why the paint still hasn't fully hardened off, trying to get the top off me thin as a jar. There you go. is I'm just going to literally get a, a very soft brush, not too much, and just brush over things gently like the springs, things that will get rubbed, corners of the sandboxes and the tops. Just to lift a little bit of the paint off the high spots.
should also then highlight parts of the springs from the background behind. Same with the steps. So you get traffic from the drivers. There we go. So it's just wiped a bit off. Just lifts a bit off. Just so it picks out some of the bits of detail. We're not going mad, just a little bit. Keep the brush clean. So wipe down the snaps. Wipe down the springs. Areas that get rubbed, touched, move. A bit of grass might rub a bit of dirt off of these parts. Filling the sandboxes, not some of the bits off. It just highlights some of the details on the edges. Again, just do each one slightly different, doesn't matter. We just added adds a bit of definition to some of the parts. So I'll just finish off these last two. One thing I will do, which I forgot to mention, is I'll get a little bit of uh, metallic number 11, umbral number 11, a bit of a nice silver paint. Give that a bit of a stir. Again, with uh, we we'll use this small brush. So we want take it off of the screwdriver when we want it. Wipe it off a bit. We don't want too much. It's just treads on the edge, just tie a little bit, where the drivers will come and if you get a bit too much on the top like that, just rub it off. Just so there's some highlighting. all we need just a tiny tiny just on the front treads corners of the treads where the driver walks up and down Is it? So we can see the different definitions of the springs, the sandboxes, steps, the pipes, which we couldn't see before. So I shall now go and put these on the loco, and I'll take you over to the loco, and uh, you can see what it looks like. And there we go, and there's the difference between the two bogies. I think you can agree that uh, just picking out those little bits of white on the pipe work has made a big difference along with the weathering. You just can't see it on the black bogey frame of the unweathered version. So there we go. I've still got the body to weather and the final coat of varnish over it once that's done but uh, 
there we go. I think Steadfast is now a good staple mate for 33050. Well guys, as you can see, I have changed the outfit. I've been to work, it's now the evening. Um, the paint has hardened up a bit nicely on the bogies anyway now. But um, I think the project was worthwhile and it has made a big visual difference to the loco. Um, if you have any alternative suggestions of how to highlight the paint, I've still got the other 60 to do, so I'm happy to try something else. Um, and anyway, any comments, questions, opinions, views, alternatives, stick them in the comments section below, and uh, I'll ever read and come back with anything that I may be able to help with. So I'm going to close this out now, and we'll just watch the Class 60 draw around a bit with its dirty bogies and uh, you can see what it looks like close up. So enjoy your modelling, see you soon, stay safe.